Hello everyone, I'm Cassandra and I'm mom and this is Millennial Mom and in today's video we are back after a week to recap Married at First Sight Season 11 Episode 13 Home Alone. Mm -hmm. The quarantine episode we have been looking for when everything is shut down. So let's get into the review. Okay, so this episode, they have to film everything by themselves. So mm -hmm. I wonder if we're still going to get the same producer interference like we always do. I don't think so. <laughs> no? Mm -mm. Well, our first couple we're going to start off with is Amelia and Bennett. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why this took me a long time to remember that Bennett was into like some film stuff. Because I was like, his camera angles are really good. Like <laughs> when they had it from the ceiling, when they were doing the mask. And the popcorn, I was like, how do you do that? But then I had to remember, that's his area of expertise. Well, that never crossed my <laughs> mind. I just thought it was just a camera angle. <laughs> well, it looks like they were having fun. So this <laughs> episode, Pastor Cal and Dr. Pepper are coming to the couples because they said they felt bad because they couldn't be there for them during this experiment you in know the what? quarantine time. You know, even though we don't normally watch it together so we get different points of view and then come together, talk about it after. But when he said that, I actually had to pause. Did you hear me pause it? Because I was like, what? I didn't hear you pause it, but I was uh, <laughs> definitely cackling at Dr. Pepper saying, you know, we usually see them more often than this, but we just couldn't this time. I was like, really? Because you have been MIA this whole season in the beginning of the season and last season. But you know what? I digress. I'm going to pull you. I decline. <laughs> so Dr. Pepper starts with Amelia. And Amelia said, you know what? During this quarantine time, she has been enjoying Bennett's company. Because mm -hmm. during this time, he's been mostly in the house. She's been volunteering at a homeless shelter. Mm -hmm. And every time she comes home, he's always doing sweet things to her. Sweet things for her. Whatever way that may be. And... She's just been growing in love more and more with Bennett each day. And Dr. Pepper was like, okay, yeah, that's cool. That's nice. I'm glad to hear that. Mm -hmm. So now let's talk about you moving to Richmond because we found out she's going to go to Virginia. And then I thought it was so interesting, Mom, when they went to the clip when she was talking to Bennett when they were playing that big chess board game. Mm -hmm. And she was like, yeah, you know, I usually find complications with relationships because I like someone who's independent and I'm independent. Mm -hmm. But, you know, usually when they don't do things my way, it kind of just fizzles out, heads out. And Dr. Pepper was like, well, you know, he's no longer your boyfriend status. This is your husband, so mm -hmm. you can't be throwing him away whenever you choose. Right, and that made her think a little bit. But you know what? Her going to Richmond, that's not that far from New Orleans, but... Louisiana. They, New right? Orleans. Yeah, we're in the same ballpark. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, <laughs> Bennett's thing is he's not sure if he wants to uproot his life because his roots are there. And his company is there and what he's established is there. So he's still on the fence about that. And Amelia doesn't know if he would really go with her or not. So when Pastor Cal meets with Bennett to check in how they're doing quarantine together, he says, you know, there's times when we're stepping on each other's toes. Because you know Bennett's going to tell the truth for the most part while Amelia just brushes over everything. Mm -hmm. Bennett was like, you know, we're still having a great time. I'm still falling in love with her. She's falling in love with me. Mm -hmm. Everything's all peachy and cream and rainbows and strawberries. Right. Everything, all the above. And I'm not surprised at that because it is. And one thing I have noticed as time has gone is that Bennett has been the one who is more open and expressive his feelings of what mm -hmm. he wants, what he needs. Versus Amelia just kind of sits back and is like, <laughs> <laughs> you're so sweet oh yeah I like that I think that's what Cal was trying to get at like have you expressed to Amelia how you feel about uprooting your life to go with her because again you're not boyfriend girlfriend you're mm -hmm. married you know what else I thought was kind of interesting during this talk with Pastor Cal mm -hmm. he had a talk about her wanting kids soon and he was like you know kids would be a nice option but I don't have the financials that are stable 
enough for it. So he knows that he has to get a stable income. And I don't see anything wrong with that. That's I mean, that is you're growing proactive. Very. <laughs> so when they finally come together and they have the conversation, I wasn't, I'm not too sure if I was 100% shocked that Bennett said that he is I already going know to what you're gonna say. plan his time somewhat in Richmond and the other part in New Orleans. I don't know if I was surprised or not. Were you? Oh, you talk about that split the time. I thought that was a nice compromise. I thought you were going to say where a million said how Bennett's such a conservationist that he only uses one square to white. <laughs> but now I was like, ew. Well, <laughs> Amelia has her flaws too with not being clean and hygienic. So I guess they match. they're one of the same, <laughs> basically. But were you surprised by that, Mom, that he said he's going to split his time instead of 100% uprooting to Richmond with her? Um, I don't know if I was surprised or not, but I do, like I said, think that's a good compromise. So it's not a no and it's not a yes. It's a I'll try it. And she was excited with that. Of course she was excited by it because she gets her way. That's exactly, well, for the most part, what Amelia wanted was for him to come. Now we're going to move on to the second lovebirds, Woody and Amani. So we see Woody and Amani in bed and Woody is snoring his pants off. Well, okay. Like he sounds like me. But here's the thing though. We all snore and if we do, we do. And if you don't, you don't know anyway. It's because you're sleeping. <laughs> well, it sounds like it was a good sleep. Amani looked like she was low-key annoyed, but she loves her man. And we found out that she finally said that she loves him. Mm -hmm. I thought that was sweet. She said she loves him with breakfast and a gift. He was so overjoyed. I was like, okay, I'm happy for Woody. He finally got what he's been looking for. Mm -hmm. that he's been saying this whole time. <laughs> but then while we had that nice part, we see them also get into their very first argument on camera, at least, mm -hmm. about the DMs. She said, you know, she was just kind of, kind of, playing joking around him like oh let me see your instagram dms let me see all the the hoochies the hoes you have mm -hmm. but what he was like uh no this is my phone my privacy you're not gonna just go look for it like you're looking for something but money was like i'm not exactly looking for something but you know when you have that feeling like something else might be going on mm -hmm. looking for something but she tried to play it off but do you think she was wrong and she should have just let it slide? Or do you think he should have just been willing to show her if he had nothing to hide? Well, I just want to know what made her think something was on the phone in the DMs. Like, did his phone beep? Was there, like, a message to come across? But the point for that is, like, there's a lot of people who feel that way, the same way Woody does. It's like, why you need to touch my phone or whatever? I mean, she did ask. And for someone to say, like, why you don't want to see it, but if you're married, married at first sight with a stranger, there's lots of things you don't know, a la Karen. <laughs> and she asked, and for you to get upset will make anyone wonder. So later on when Amani meets with Dr. Pepper, mm -hmm. she lets Dr. Pepper know, you know, everything's been going smooth so far. He's been telling me that, you know, he loves me. I finally told him that I love him too. Mm -hmm. But the part that she brings up was that argument that they had. Yeah, she did. And Dr. Pepper wanted to know, like, how was it resolved, things like that. She did end up saying how they talked it out after a while. And I think Amani and Woody are good communicators from what we see on TV. Mm -hmm. But another question that Dr. Pepper asked Amani was, like, how do you think the marriage process is going? She said, oh, I thought it would be kind of long so far. But that's not what it turned out to be because, you know, they have fallen in love. And Woody did say it first. You know, she had to say that. <laughs> and just how things have come about. And when she mentioned that, how they had that argument and then they got past it, I thought mm -hmm. that was a good thing to share with Dr. Pepper, showing their progress. So now we're going to move on to Pastor Cal and Woody. And I want to say first that I was feeling Woody's outfit. He looked good. He, I feel like he was the only one who came dressed to impress for the zoom slash skype um session <laughs> so when they start to get into their conversation of course woody lets pastor cal know that everything's basically been running pretty fine there's no challenges like that that's coming up mm -hmm. if anything he thought it would be more so on the intimacy and just expressing love to each other mm -hmm. but they basically you know 
of course, came to fruition with that. So everything's smooth sailing. But then <laughs> we get back into the argument that they had mm -hmm. about the Instagram DMs. Yeah, and Woody explained his part of the situation. And when he told Pastor Cal about them skeezes, them hoes, them scallywags. <laughs> and Pastor Cal tried to act like he didn't know what he was talking about. He said, about. wait a minute, what? But he knew what he was talking about. I thought that was funny. <laughs> but, you know, again... Pastor Cal acknowledged, you know, it's a good that you all are able to communicate, but at the same time, don't get to a situation where you have to brush things under the rug and then mm -hmm. talk about them later because that may cause an issue down the line. Especially for Woody because Woody seems like he's all jokey jokey, but I know he's serious. Mm -hmm. And so they get into the conversation about having kids. He wants kids like two weeks ago and she <laughs> is you know trying to hold off on the kids not ready for kids right now mm -hmm. and of course pastor cal I gotta ask him if he's being protected with his little shipmates and he said yeah you know i'm being protected but he still wants to eventually well the way would he hesitate with that laugh like <laughs> you think they have faith well, uh, I think it's been 50-50 because they admitted <laughs> that, you know, sometimes they did, sometimes they didn't. But that was in the earlier stages, so maybe now they're taking better precaution. So when we see them coming back together, it's all love. And I was like, I am loving this love from them in this episode. They talk about, again, having kids. Mm -hmm. And he said, I want a little Scorpio baby. She was like, I can't do a Scorpio baby, but we could do a Scorpio puppy, and then maybe we could do a Scorpio baby after. Right. <laughs> and, you know, I still say Imani's going to get her way. That puppy will probably be before decision day. I think they're both going to get their way. They're going to have a Scorpio baby and a Scorpio puppy, and then we're going to see them on couples cam with the baby and the puppy. So moving on to Olivia and Brett. Since Olivia is a nurse practitioner, we mm -hmm. know that she is definitely one of the people on the front lines for the Rona that's happening out there. And Brett is in IT, so basically he can really do his job at home. So I assume that's what he's been doing at home. Mm -hmm. Doing that, hanging with the cats, whatever else Brett likes to do for fun. So when Olivia comes home to him, I guess they have some time together, but I guess the one scene when we saw they were watching a movie. They were cuddled up, hugged up for the most part, or just sitting very closely together. You know what? I just thought when I saw them hugged up, cuddled up, um, <laughs> having really closely together, having conversation, <laughs> looked like together to the camera, whatever. I just thought, hmm. Now this is what Olivia said she wanted last week. Maybe, maybe there might be a glimmer of something, but that ended real quick. I guess. Olivia said that she was going to go visit her family for like a day or two. I wasn't too sure about how long the link was. I didn't catch it. She just said she was going to check on her family and friends. But it don't matter because <laughs> when she was out with her family, Brett took, I guess, his cat, mm -hmm. <laughs> took all the stuff, the food and everything, and left back to his house mm -hmm. so when Olivia came back she said you know she was surprised because he said that she was only going to take a few things but he ended up taking all the food and stuff in the pantry next thing you know we see her calling him on the phone like you know you didn't say this was a part of the plan but Brett was like I did say this was part of the plan mm -hmm. you know what tripped me up the most what the most scandalous part of all <laughs> That Brett's gonna say on the phone, I didn't take all the food. I ate the food. And she was like, Oh, yeah, but you left the pot too. He's like, Dang, I missed the pot. I was like, Goodbye, Brett. Goodbye on that. You know you wrong for leaving that girl with no food intentionally. Probably ate it all up with the cat. And if he was worried about the cat staying home, he sure left Olivia's cat. So. Well, here's the thing with that. I don't know what happened, but whatever happened to lead them to that point where he packed his stuff up to go home, because we found out later that he did go home for a few days. No, so, forever. Well, previously to this, <laughs> for a few days to work. Um, to take everything and leave her with nothing was wrong. Now, let's move into the call with Dr. Pepper. When Dr. Pepper was talking to Olivia, Olivia again expressed her concerns. The same thing she's been saying with Dr. Viviana and whoever else will listen. 
<laughs> you know, there's no communication there. <laughs> this, that, this, that. Breath, well, that's breath, the breath. only thing they have is the miscommunication part. Right. And the only thing they really connect on is the cats. We already said that. I know we have. We said it for <laughs> weeks now. And one of the things that Dr. Pepper asked Olivia was, do you think the way that you're reacting is causing Brett to overreact? And she was like, um, I don't know. I don't think so. And I'm thinking it is. Because we've already established, us the people, have established that, I have. <laughs> you know, Brett's sarcasm is a defense mechanism. Not saying it's right, not Team Brett. But Olivia has been pushy to the point of no return for a few weeks now. It's okay to give your point. It's okay to say how you feel. But again, it's a constant berating of your point, what you want all the time. And when it seems like you're not getting your way, Olivia... Mm -hmm. That's when things shut down communication wise and then you want Brett to talk to you and I don't know anyone at least in my circle who that would work with. But when we jump to Pastor Cal and Brett, mm -hmm. Brett is over it. You can tell he's over it. He doesn't have to say anything even though we already been knew he was over it. Yeah. It's a look on his face, a sarcasm, it's defense the, mechanism. The body language. It's not defense. It's not in quotes. It's real. Mm -hmm. If that's who he is, his sarcasm. But when they first started a conversation, one of the things that got me, like the thing that got you with him taking all the food and forgetting the pot, <laughs> was when he said, oh, yeah, well, her cat's been aggressive to my cat. They even scratched him. I'm like, you have bigger issues than that, Brett. Like, get to the nitty-gritty like you're wasting our time. The cats are important, okay? Okay. <laughs> so when Pastor Cal asked him basically, like, how do you feel about decision date? Also, to be noted, decision day was supposed to be a few weeks prior, mm -hmm. but they let it drag out. I hope they got compensated for that. But anyways, <laughs> Brent said, no. Just flat out no. Not a I don't know, not a hesitation, just a no. Mm -hmm. So basically, when Brett and Olivia came to meet together, I thought it was pointless. But at least the experts felt like they needed to talk it out. Mm -hmm. Basically, she was <laughs> like, okay, so you want to work this out or not? He's like, no. And that was that. So Karen is actually helping out the first responders and whatever her job and titles because I forgot what it was. But she's in healthcare. Karen is out. Miles is in the house. He's basically doing all the household jobs. He's mm -hmm. cooking. He's cleaning. Doing all those things for her because he wants to make her feel, you know, at home and safe. He made sure to add that safe in there. He did. So it looks like it's going good from Miles' standpoint, but from Karen, it kind of seems like, you know, maybe she might be a little bit distancing herself or maybe she's overwhelmed or stressed with work. So with in return, Miles feels like she isn't trying like she has not been. She isn't giving like she said she was a few weeks ago. But she did acknowledge though that she realized that Miles, you know, does have depression and she can see that maybe he's distancing himself a little bit from her. So she's like, you know, I don't really know what to give to him. You know, <laughs> I know you struggle with that. But I didn't struggle with it. She, I can see where she's coming from a little bit. But she said that she's been trying or the things that she's been wanting to do to implement in her trying. But she still hasn't done it. Well, to your point, you know, before I say that, you know, there's some viewers, some subscribers who feel like maybe I or we or people in general have been hard on Karen. But I'm here to say I feel like I'm, I've been pretty fair on Karen. With this being extended an extra couple weeks, they should have already had decision day for mm -hmm. them to still be in the same circumstances they were in the very beginning with three maybe additional weeks added. Um, I don't see that as trying because if it had been decision day, we'll touch on that with Miles. Um, what she really think the outcome would be? That's <laughs> just my thing. So that leads into the conversation with Dr. Pepper. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was interesting because when she started to talk to Dr. Pepper, she was talking about, oh yeah, we're just doing sweet things for each other. But then the editor slash production only showed the clips that Miles was doing. So... You know, maybe 
give Karen the benefit of the doubt. She has been doing nice things for Miles on the low. We just don't see it. Mm -hmm. But that's not what Miles is saying either. So it's kind of like what is really happening. Yeah, because when she was expressing that, you know, um, Miles is the giver in the relationship and the one who wants to do more things for her because he expressed that several times and also to Pastor Cal earlier in the season. Mm -hmm. And then for Karen to continue to say that to Dr. Pepper, like she knows that how he is, but she's still working on it. I'm thinking, how are you working <laughs> on it? Because we do know that she does cook for him sometimes because he's mentioned it, that he cooks for her. That's the way she shows love. But the way that Miles shows his love to her doesn't fall under the way that she thinks a man should do it. So that's where she's still working on it part because she doesn't think he's masculine enough, especially when she said he called her sis. Mm -hmm. She didn't like that. When she brought that back up to him, mm -hmm. he got mad. He said he got angry about it and was more direct than usual. Yeah, he said, you know, when the conversation got raw, that's when she started listening. And I'm like, you know what? That's about right, because I've seen in comments before, and I've even thought of myself, like, so you must want somebody, speaking about Karen, who's going to talk to you in any old type of way, mm -hmm. and maybe, you know, you like that aggressive part, and if you do, then the things that you said about Miles, that's not Miles' personality, and Miles mm -hmm. did say to Pastor Cat, like, maybe she doesn't want someone who's more progressive like me. Why was she mad, crying? close to mm -hmm. about him saying no to her if this was decision day exactly and i was like so this upsets you why because it seems like along the way from what we've seen production editing or whatever that karen has been more dismissive to miles like oh he likes to get his nails done or his feet done or whatever oh he mm -hmm. called me sister oh he <laughs> does this or that and he told you if this was decision day, he would say no. Really? Because again, decision day was really maybe three weeks prior to this. So you had extra time and nothing seemed to have changed. And I hate for it to seem like I'm not Team Karen, but I'm not Team Karen. Period. It's okay. It's, not, it's okay not to be Team Karen. So later we see, of course, Pastor Cal talk to Miles. And he brings all this stuff up, like we mentioned earlier, about the masculinity issue, about them not being intimate at all still. And he is just like, kind of like, where do I go from here? Like, what more can he do? Because he feels like he's doing a lot and she's still not giving what she said she was going to give for him for his needs. Because he's always tending to her needs, like we've been seeing, like his sister said he does. Like, basically everyone... But she's still not giving anything back to Miles. And I still say that Miles, maybe he should have like put his foot down. Like if I don't get X, Y, Z, I'm out. <laughs> because that's the only thing that, that had Karen on the ropes. Like, oh, he might leave me. Well, that's not really his type of thing to do. But you know what I thought was funny? Karen once again, you know, said to him that, you know, I'm going to be more intimate. I'm going to hold your hand more. And none of that happened. Trying to kiss you three times a week. I was like, girl, you guys have been in quarantine for six weeks. That's a long time. Right. And still nothing. So, I don't know. Maybe they'll pick something up when we finally see that log cabin, the infamous log <laughs> cabin scene. But, I don't know. So, for our last couple, we have Christina and Henry. Christina's in the house cooking. She's making gumbo. Henry's out working because he does something healthcare related. So it's also while in quarantine, Henry's birthday, mm -hmm. his 35th birthday. And I was like, is Henry an Aries? Because I had my quarantine birthday in the house too. But they were quarantined for six weeks, so I don't know how long it was. Mm -hmm. But can you believe, well, I'm sure some people can, that Christina forgot his birthday? Um, yes, I can believe it <laughs> because they haven't known each other for very long and they don't communicate. So what, why would she know that? Well, the first thing I do, if someone's my friend, I'm going to put your birthday in my phone so I can remember. They're not friends. They're married. <laughs> that part. So later on, we see Henry on his video cam. He's saying that Christina actually said that she was going to go out for a walk. Mm -hmm. But, you know, she was too dressed up for a walk. Like, he let her live. 
So he was texting her because it was getting late. Like, where is she? Mm -hmm. What's happening? He said that she just left his text on red. And he had to find out what she was doing from the other wives checking her IG. I was like, which wife was it? Who was it? Was it Amani? Does it matter who it was? <laughs> we didn't find out. But here we go again with IG. IG has gotten a lot of couples, not necessarily in trouble, but uh, on Cut. the rocks. Cut. Entangled. <laughs> not entangled. <laughs> but it's like... I guess maybe she didn't think that the other wives or whoever will tell Henry what's going on. But Henry let that slide for right now as we found out when he met up with Pastor Cal later. He said, you know, there's been lots of dishonesty. She said she lived in a CBD area, mm -hmm. but she lied. She didn't live there. But then she said she lived in an Airbnb and now she lives here. I was like, ooh. Henry <laughs> dropped all the tea, didn't he? And then I was like, Henry, what are you saying about Christina? Not only that, you know, they show the clip of, oh, well, all my stuff is in the car. Like, where are we going to live? We're living with you. Oh, what Pastor Cal said was, well, have you brought this up to Christina? And with, of course, last episode where Christina kind of like brought down his confidence a little bit more because she already said that he wasn't a confident man and whatever. Mm -hmm. He was like, you know, I haven't really brought it up to her because I don't feel like I can articulate it the best. And I'm glad Pastor Cal stopped him. He was like, no, wait, you can say it to her. We're talking right now. Just bring the same energy to Christina like you do. So Pastor Cal tells him, you know, if you are trying to make this work out with Christina, you just got to dig a little deeper, try a little harder because Henry's still on the fence. Like, you know, I don't know if I want to make it to decision day. So when <laughs> he's not on the fence, he knows. He just he didn't want to say. say it. Mm -hmm. So then when we see Dr. Pepper with Christina, she, to me, I don't know if you got this feeling. She kind of tried to make it seem like everything was okay. Not like everything's perfect, but like they're not having as many problems. Like Pastor Cal and Dr. Pepper already knows that they're having why do all that like just say what it is and then she finally opened up about like you know he doesn't talk to me which is true she feels like he's not attracted to her which is true <laughs> and I just wish Henry would say this to Christina well actually he has I don't know if he said the attractive part but he did say he wasn't well, into her and he didn't yeah. like how she was doing things how she conducted herself mm -hmm. but Christina surprised me when she said she still wanted to try and I'm like you do like, yeah, because she don't have no place to live. No shade. <laughs> but I'm calling it like Henry said it. I'm going off of Henry's word. Well, Dr. Pepper said, well, have you tried? Have you exhausted all measures? Like, maybe you need to give skin-to-skin <laughs> -skin contact. Like, maybe you need to hold hands. But I believe Dr. Viviana said that to her previously when she talked to her. And to Olivia as well. Like, the skin-to-skin -skin contact. And to who else? intimacy thing Brett all of them all the, all the couples who aren't doing the best you know and I was just sitting there thinking like I don't think that's gonna work they've had so many conversations that just went mm -hmm. south that this new reality of her leaving and not coming home at night and being dishonest well yeah even more so to Henry that he's just not willing to go any further I just think he wants to go to the end of the process and that's it. So later on, when we see them coming back together, they're starting off slow talking, but Henry is like, you know what? I'm just going to come off the gate and say it. I feel like you've been dishonest. Christina was like, how? What, who, me? <laughs> how have I been dishonest? <laughs> mm -hmm. He was like, well, you said you lived in a CBD area. She was like, no, I didn't. And he was like, yes, you did. Plus, you said it on camera. She's like, well, I don't live there now. Of course, you don't live there now. That's the whole point of you living here. You don't live there anymore, but you said that you did live there. So did you live there or did you not live there is what we were trying to get at. Mm -hmm. And I just think no matter what answer, I know I keep going back to this, no matter what <laughs> answer Christine is going to give, mm -hmm. Henry friend zoned her and checked out weeks ago. But every time, what I don't like is every time that Henry decides to want to articulate himself and say what he feels. Christina's like, you know, you're just so hard to understand. I don't know what you're talking about. You do know what he's talking about. He's speaking clean, 
clear English to you with no big words in it. You know what he's talking about, Christina. So it's either you're actually being dishonest, like he's saying, and I hope she's not being dishonest about everything, or she's just trying to do something for the camera, and I don't know what that is because she was definitely putting on those tears. Well, they look like tears, but... <laughs> trying to make us feel something. And then she just storms out and says, you know what? I'm mentally drained from all this. So, after that conversation, we see the next scene with Henry. Mm -hmm. Henry says, ever since that conversation that they had, Christina hasn't been home. So, where has Christina been? I don't know. Maybe at her <laughs> friend's house that was the life of the party. But what he did say was he's received texts. And other things saying like maybe he's gay or maybe he's in a different relationship. And he's like, you know what? I need to get to the bottom of this because these things simply aren't true. Mm -hmm. So where is Christina getting this from? Because Henry asked for the car facts. Christina didn't prove it. So I hope Henry proves it because he said he's not trying to be on here, trying to mislead no woman or anything. All right, everyone, so that was the end of this week's episode, and I was kind of here for it. Mm -hmm. I'm glad that Brett and Olivia are done. Now we just need a few more couples to be over with, and that's good. But we are finally getting to this log cabin scene, and whenever we get to the log cabin scene, we know the season is about to wrap up. So I'm definitely interested in what's about to happen next. Yeah, that log cabin always brings out the drama, the who, what, when, where, and why <laughs> mm -hmm. for these couples. So let us know what you guys thought about this week's episode in the comments down below. Thank you all so much for watching. Thank you all for subscribing. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up and you share this video to other people who watch Married at First Sight. And we will see you very soon. Thank you all for watching. And as always, live simply, be grateful.